you're watching the Go Crying the Walk In podcast. I'm Chef Cholo, and you already know. As usual, we are powered by Hospitality News Magazine and Hospitality News Magazine Online. If you want to have your finger on the pulse of everything hospitality, look no further. Today's guest is Jonathan Perkins from the Cooperage Inn in Calverton. Hey, Jonathan, how you doing, brother? Nice to meet you. Everything going good today, brother? Yeah, good. All right. Thanks for having me. Now, the Cooperage Inn, for me, has a little bit of history because, uh, you know, years back, uh, my parents, you know, we grew up and everybody knows I went to John Glenn High School. And, uh, John, you were from Northport, too, right? Yeah. Jonathan, I'm sorry, Jonathan. brother. We're not gonna, <laughs> I'm going to try not to screw that up today, okay? <laughs> and uh, when my parents moved uh, from our home uh, in East Northport, they bought the big house in Manorville. And, you know, it was a wonderful place for us to go out and bring the grandkids and stuff. And my dad would always be on my case, Chris, this Cooperage Inn is the place where me and your mother go for brunch, this and that. So, you know, my kids were got to an age where they could be go to a restaurant. I had two twin boys. Uh, I, I have two twins. They're 23 now. But at the time, we were talking about they're about five, six years old. And uh, you have a really, really busy place. So, you know, there was the waiting factor and all that with the twins. But anytime we went there, the brunch was really, really wonderful, and always the food was awesome. And, uh, you know, time went on, and now I know pre-pandemic, uh, post-pandemic, we have uh, we have a new business that's been yeah. born out of the Cooperage Inn, No Faux Pot Pies. Nah, right. You know Chef Cholo <laughs> loves pot pies, right? There's no pot in here, is there, Jonathan? <laughs> that's next, maybe. Because if that's what you want to do, Chef Cholo knows a little bit about that. Uh. <laughs> Maybe we could do a collab in the future. Yeah, well, the, the box would look cool with yep. the big green leaf on it. You know what I mean? <laughs> we won't give any of that to Dominic. No. <laughs> so, Jonathan, tell us a little bit about, you know, this progression. I mean, you were a restaurant, yeah. pandemic hit. Obviously, we had to close. You know, how did this happen? Yeah, it was a crazy situation. COVID hit. Uh, I think myself, along with everyone else in business, was wondering, well, my God, what do we do? What do we do? The big reset. The big reset. Uh, your head spinning, trying to figure it out. And uh, for me, I just thought I picked the most popular thing on my menu, which was the chicken pot pie. Because we you were had. obviously, I'm sorry, but you were obviously like you were selling food to go now. The yeah, so we closed. started selling food to go. I mean, we're not really a to-go restaurant. so Very hard for a white table. That was hard for us, but we did the best we could. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that was the time that we decided that, you know what, maybe we got to make these pot pies <laughs> frozen and offer them to go let's make uh, people feel very warm yeah. and comfortable during a horrible time that's right and you know what everyone you're loves a genius a pie. my friend no you're a genius <laughs> nah, i don't know about that dominic <laughs> <laughs> i want i want jonathan lined up for a humanitarian award <laughs> does cisco long island yeah. give those out <clears throat> so anyway one thing led, led to another we started with the chicken pot pie started selling them and that became popular and then I so it was just one thing, chicken pot pie. That was it to start. Right? And people and were dominated only, buying chicken pot pies. And granted, this is only what a couple of years ago. Right? It's not too long ago. Not too long ago. No. And uh, once that chicken pot pie started taking off, we started selling them. Where you know we're buying boxes where we can find them, making our own homemade stickers. And, wow. And uh, then we started, you know, I started like okay, you know, which was I love to do, is start creating and and trying different items. So the next dish, uh, next pot pie we came up with was the short rib pot pie. Short rib. Short rib. And I'm like, you know, beef pot pie. Ugh. It don't sound right. Yeah, it don't sound it right. Don't sound you know, right. short rib. Is short like, rib anything. Now. Yeah, short rib anything. So That's and the these, badge of honor right? Now. And Hamburger, and everything. It's been a home run because obviously if you cook a short rib correctly, it's wonderful. the tenderness it's is wonderful. beyond. So that was the second one. And then the rest, I just kept going. So yeah. lobster came next or uh, no? Because this is Long Island. Turkey. Then we did the turkey pot pie around, uh, you know, Thanksgiving. I got a couple of turkeys in my backyard <laughs> if you're looking for any. I bet yep. you got them in your backyard, oh, too. Oh, my God. You have tons of turkeys. Yeah, I'm out in the woods and they're you all got, over the place. You're at the, what they call the gateway to the, hand, to the North, North Fork, Fork, right? The That's gateway it. to the North Ga Fork. Gateway to the North Fork. So, yeah, it, was, it, it, it just started with that. And, you know, the formula, um, working with the guys in the kitchen, a lot of them have been with me forever. Ever. So you um, were able to keep everybody working during yes, the pandemic. We kept Cooks, front of the house people. Yes. I just probably took on a, a yeah. life of I mean, its own. In front of the house, obviously. Not uh, so much. Not so much, but 
we uh, we did that. We uh, we donated a lot of food to the hospital. We got involved in that. What hospital is that? Uh, Peconic Bay. Peconic Bay yeah, Hospital. So shout out to Peconic yeah, Bay. Yeah, great great uh, organization. We tried to help as best we could. Everybody tried right? to help. Well, yeah, not everybody, a, but the right. That was people. a crazy time in everyone uh, in everyone's life. You know, you didn't know one day from the other. It's like. <laughs> You know, I just came back from Aruba, and I had 400 pounds of corned beef in my, you know, cooked <laughs> off, ready for St. Patty's Day. And, uh, Most that, St. Patty's and Day. then on Sunday, that Sunday, they closed us all down. That so was, I was it. like, oh, my that God, <laughs> what do you do? So, Well, look what you did. You made something yeah, really so freaking cool. We, uh, we went from that, and then... You know, everything evolved. We started. Uh, so you can still get a Popeye if you go to the Cooperage, right? You oh, yeah. It's on, so on the menu right now, we have the, the short rib and the chicken. We, okay. We expanded that. But that's it because that's it was it. just too much, you know, for capacity. We bought special ovens. Uh, what do you mean Popeye. special ovens? We have these uh, Merry Com- Chefs. What is that? It's a Merry Chef. Like a combi it's oven? It's a combi oven. But uh, what it does to the Popeye is Talk it to puffs me. it up. The puff, the pastry. It on cooks it. the pastry cooks really the, beautifully. Yeah, and it puffs up like. And so it it, it adds water to the cabinet or I, something it, like that. It's like however, an intelligent cooking. Yeah, it's a really the, you have to program it a certain way. Wow. And, uh, it's worked great for us. Other than you know, it's very hard to duplicate that at home. You know, I tell everyone convection roast is obviously the totally best. different. You know, yeah. anything convection to me, well, if you have it, is the yeah, best way to go. Not my right. oven. I have a very old oven in my All house. Right. <laughs> It's just the air, right? Yeah, so. no, but you know, you could actually buy intelligent cooking. Yeah, you could buy a combi oven for your house if you want to go that route. Yeah, you know you what could. I mean? If you could. Yeah. Now, you could buy these in a lot of places out there. I'm yeah, seeing. so we like have... I see the sidewalk into a yeah, deli. I walk yeah. into a gourmet. Yeah. I, you know, I was on the South Shore somewhere. Yeah, uh, in the Hamptons, right? Somewhere in maybe Quag or something. I yeah, saw so this. we have yeah, we, Big... we have like 17 locations. 17. Now, 17, and th- those are growing. So our business model really is to wholesale them out not for me to open different stores and sell them that people way. Bu- so when you give it to uh, another company they they get it frozen or they they, they get, get it, it frozen and there's a wholesale price and you're delivering yourself we or you got you... as well we have wow. a van and that's on if you look on uh, you know our instagram nofo Popeyes, you see our history with that right and this is all in within two years so this is like I mean, you know, could you imagine? This how- is my gateway to retirement. I hope <laughs> you're lying to yourself. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, being out of the restaurant business, maybe you hope so. Anyway, that's like that movie keeps dragging know, me back I in. I know, dragging. But I love what I do. You know, you it's know? funny because we were talking before, and like your whole life, you've been in the restaurant business. Your mom whole and dad own yeah. restaurants. Yep. Yeah. Australian country, country in and Northport, and up on the hill. Yeah. I think That's you like. I, learned. I think I used to get like ostrich meat there or something. Yeah, like you could know. get no, wild things there. Kangaroo tails. Kangaroo <laughs> tails, something. Yeah. Man. And the cocktails were fire. Yeah. Yeah. Friend so. of mine just reopened. It. It's called Arlo Kitchen and Bar. Yeah, Good friend of mine. Shout out to my boy place. Stevie. Yeah. Fantastic. I heard it's the swankiest spot yeah, in town right now. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. The only thing is that hill, man. That's a tough one. Bad location. Yeah, yeah you don't want to go there in a snowstorm. Weird yeah. location. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they get. Maybe they let them put a sign down on the street. I know. My dad actually uh, bought that house in 1976 and converted it into. So it was Australia. someone's home. Someone yeah, it lived was someone's up there. home and he converted, built it himself. And how do you do that? You go to the town, they let you do that, like yeah. turn your house into a restaurant? <laughs> no, he, he blocked around the whole foundation of uh, the whole frame of the Smart house. Guy. Yeah, and made it into. You know, so your whole yeah. life you're in a restaurant yeah. business. You ever think that you were going to have to like dream up how to serve people outside of your restaurant because that Never. they weren't going to let you open one day? I know that's crazy, right? Wild day. It is that's wild. wild my it's brother. absolutely wild. Hey, it's your boy Chef Cholo from the Go Crying to Walk In podcast. And if you're like me, you yearn for that old school relationship between purveyors and chefs. Nowadays. They got me going on a website, looking up my own orders, placing my own orders. I don't even know if the thing's going to get delivered the next day. I got nobody to talk to. If you're looking for that old school service with aggressive pricing, look no further than American Food Connection. What you do is you call the number at the bottom of the screen, you ask for Danny, and you get it straight. You already know. So it's not only like these incredible savory pies, because Chef Cholo has something to his left over yeah. here. Coconut cream. Now, I really like to look at this because it's like it's not just this flat looking thing. It's yeah. got like this big dome on yeah. it. So 
And he's like, is that like all? So that's a really like a co- coconut cream custard pie. Custard. So that's yeah. like, that's like, oh man. Right. And there's a key lime. We call it key lime pie. It's not the, the traditional like Key West key lime. It's more like a key lime mousse. Yeah. So, well, all those guys so told me I love key to do things anyway. with, you know, but I like, see this lime zest right in yeah, there. Yeah. Everything's made fresh. Graham cracker crust. Yep. Grain cracker crust. Dom, you're not getting any yeah. of the sweet pies. <laughs> and then we have a carrot, and we do an apple pear puff, and a bunch of other things. Wow. And then we have a, a vegetarian pot pie. How's that go? It's great. No, you have, putting. I'm sorry, but are you putting like a like a, you know fake meat in there, or is it no, just vegetables? No, strictly. 14, Thank you, sir. Thank 14 you. Fourteen different vegetables are going into that vegetarian pot pie. Fourteen. Fourteen, and there's no. It's it's strictly vegetarian. Are you sourcing a lot of this stuff like uh, locally out there? Because I see you're in the yeah. you're in you're so, in the right where it gets going. Absolutely. We were buying local produce up to believe it or not, second week of January. Wow! Congratulations. I was still buying. Broccoli and, and uh, cauliflower and Brussels sprouts, butternut squash. Did I see the there's farms. even like swag you could get, like Popeye hats and T-shirts? Yeah, we got those. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I brought you look. a couple. Oh yeah, yeah, I like that. <laughs> now you guys like go to those farmer market vibes? Uh, or you do that? Really, we we thought about that model, but I think we uh, the model that we have right now is the I wholesale. I think it's solid. Yeah, and let everyone else sell them for us. Somebody else go to a uh, right, to a place, and yeah. uh, they get. Hey, listen. Wholesale wise, they get their price. You know, I get my price. I'm always the cheapest. They right. mark them up, and they don't right. have to do anything. And the, being a, that it's a frozen product, I mean, the shelf life is six months. Six months at least. That's I mean, awesome. I tried these pot pies after six months, and they were perfect. So who knows if they're even? It could even go a year. Could even Let's go a year. You know, I mean, the freezer, right? So the freezer is a beautiful yeah. tool. And they're the other thing is uh, the way we make these pies. These are, you know, they are pricey, but I guess you get what you pay for. These pies, the small ones, are 24 to 26 ounces. Right. So you think about that. I mean, how much are you eating? You know, but let's like, put two. But, like, let's let everybody know, like, yeah. you're making gravies. You're making yeah, demi so glasses. Make, you're doing, you know, this is not just cornstarch no, and chicken base no. and water. You I know mean, what I mean? The process of what we do and how we do is probably. That's why it's so awesome. They're so good. Because yeah. we <laughs> capture all the juices. We roast We roast whole chickens. Right. We, I, I, we pull them off the bone. Um, they go through a process. I mean, there's so many stages. And then I have the guys make this recipe. All the recipes are written up. And they make them a certain way. And that's it. That's you know, awesome. It's done. You got the Bible. You got the, yeah, Bible. got the Bible. Follow the rules. Yeah. Follow the rules. That's how you make. <laughs> that's how you're able to package yeah. and do something like that. If you were, if if there was no consistency, people no. would notice right no. away. You know. And I got some great staff. I mean, well, you know, I got the guys in the kitchen who've been with me. Uh, John Brizziana, he's the main guy to make the pot pie. He's been with me 20 years. 20 you know, years. 20 years. He was working as my chef, sous chef. And I pull him away for that as we get older. You know, right. young no, man's I game, hear you. right? I hear so you. now he's got the, the, the banker's hours. You know, so you're loving it. So the guy who was <laughs> your executive chef for many years now runs the Popeye division. Uh, he was my chef. I'm, I've always been the executive chef. Okay, okay. I consider myself. So all, the restaurant itself, the, the consistency, uh, obviously, is, is the number one thing for me in this of business. And it was important for me to whoever came in and took over the head chef position that they followed with the the standard recipes that made us successful. Made you and I let them do do their own thing uh, with creativity on specials and things. It's worked wonderfully. It sounds me. like a great yeah. A great and John Brizziana was one of the guys that knows all of the routine, and now he, I moved him over. Right. Uh, I got Scott Hopkins, one of my managers, who's going to be. I'm going to give him, get him involved in this company. He's, you know, young 40-year-old, eager. Right. eager, and, you know. Are you school. saying I'm 40 years old in my 40s? Because <laughs> no. I thank you very much, sir. <laughs> but meaning, you know, the whole computer end of the business. No, and like, the part that he, scares me? Yeah, yeah, he's responsible for the labeling and helping me oh, okay. with that end of the business. So, so you're even developing, like, your look and everything in the yeah. house. You're not hiring a stylist. No. Because because no. this is an awesome packaging, yeah. and you know, like, that's a big part yeah. of anything yep. that you buy now. Absolutely. Apple invented that. Marketing. You know what I mean? well, Marketing. The boxes, the everything. Boxes, yeah, so we went, we found a company. Now we run the boxes off. They all, if you look on the ba- uh, bottom, they have, you know, the cooking instructions, the ingredients. It's awesome. Yeah, dude. so. It's awesome. And yeah, look they're, at that. They're, they're indestructible, you know. 
<laughs> contains wheat. That, the next <laughs> one is sesame, right? Well, you, you have to make put that. sure. Do you have you sesame? You have to make sure you list everything. Sesame's these the days. new yeah. bad the person bad out there. Yeah, Take I don't know oil. why. No sesame in these. Yeah. They're asking you a lot about yeah. sesame yeah. lately. And, I have, and the first thing <laughs> I got to say is, oh, sesame seeds or yeah. sesame oil? <laughs> And then yeah. someone goes, oh, just a seed. And then the other oh. guy goes, oh, just the oil. Yeah. And the other one here and there. Yeah, that's a big uh, challenge these days with allergies. And tough seems one. Like every, yeah, real tough. tough you know, one. you're a busy restaurant. And can I, ha- I can't have this. I can have this. But, you know, it's one, difficult. <laughs> one time know? I visited a customer and I said, uh, no problem. Can you just give me your allergy? She goes, oh, I have a card. <laughs> and she had like a business card. The first allergy was bee stings. I was like, well, we don't have to worry about any bees in the restaurant today. Let's move on to the next one. Yeah, I think, things. I think any restaurant owner could actually write a book. We all you know, on our, we could all write a book on our experience. It wouldn't it's be as wonderful bizarre. as my brother Tom Shodell's, yeah. but I think <laughs> yeah. I think that yeah, we could all write that no. book. That's why I'm doing the podcast. Yeah. Let it all out there, right? That's awesome. I mean, you know so, what? Yeah. So you, you, I'm no, it's all good. So staffing, you have obviously you don't have any issues with staffing. You're not one no. of those guys out there who put his hair up. because. I have a theory on that, yeah. Jonathan, and I'll tell you, is that if you gave someone a, sh- a shitty job before, I think people have learned that they don't have to work shitty jobs, but they're going to be very happy to work a great job right. and be happy because I could tell when I eat at your restaurant, yeah. when I see there's this happy things, people yeah. are happy to work there. So, yeah. you know, that's a credit to you. And yeah. you know, that's why you're sitting here today. Like, no, I don't have a problem with any staff. You know, people ask me that. Do you have any problems? And you're with out staff? there, brother. Yeah, and I you're say no, there. I don't. And they say why? Well, number one, pay them. Got to right? pay. You got to pay. You gotta I mean, pay. this environment take less of a profit. Do what you got to do, and create the best environment you can for it's food for the restaurant where my servers. It's entertaining. Everyone it's food. come in, coming in to work. They know they're going to make consistently the same amount of money. So that's how you keep. That's that's what my answer is. You know? In this wicked busy life you have, brother, do you have any time for television? You watch it. You watching the the bear? A little bit. You watching the menu or the bear? Yeah, I'm a big fisherman, so I. Oh. I have, you know, I have. Uh, you know, I, I really enjoy that. I have a group of guys that were like intensely. You watch the, like fishing television shows yeah, a little bit. You yeah. Know, some YouTube stuff. I got some of my friends. You know, you know, I saw recently how they're getting people to watch more of those fishing shows. Yeah. They have girls in bikinis yeah. on fishing boats now. Have you <laughs> yeah. noticed? That? I know I you have. probably. I noticed that. I know Mrs. Perkins probably doesn't uh, want to know about great. that. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw it. Like, there's a girl in a fawn catching a, a sport fish. I'm yep. like, how did that girl hey, hold gets the, the rod? Guy, it gets the guys to watch, right? Everybody knows yeah. how to do that. We've been yeah. doing that our whole life. So, uh, not even The Last of Us, that new one, the new mo- the new show on uh, the new show on HBO where everyone turns into like a zombie and their heads look like mushrooms. Oh yeah, I didn't see that yet. Maybe we could do a vegetarian. Yeah. We could do a Last of Us pot pie with <laughs> mushrooms. You never know. <laughs> You never know. You, you know, know what? Popeye's the sky's the limit. I'm going to give you that one today. <laughs> I gave you All that right, one. All right. There you go. Well, Jonathan, this has been a really cool talk. Yeah. I appreciate you coming in today, and I appreciate all this wonderful food that me and yeah, my family are going to enjoy great. tonight. Yeah. And, Dominic, you're not taking any of these. No, absolutely not. They're all for you. And uh, I would always like to thank Dominic for helping me produce the show, executive producer, super producer Dominic, <laughs> and Abe, mellow man Abe behind the board, always making yeah. it sound and look beautiful. Jonathan. Nice. Thank you, brother. Thank you for having me. All I the really success appreciate in the future. That. It's wonderful. And like I said before, you're watching the Go Crying the Walk-In podcast. I'm Chef Cholo. You already know. <laughs>